Art Shibayama was just 13 years old and living comfortably in Peru when he was forced out of the only home he had ever known. During World War II, the United States government, in collaboration with several Latin American countries, orchestrated the forced removal and internment of over 2,000 persons of Japanese ancestry, which included both citizens of 13 Latin American countries as well as Japanese immigrants. Like young Archibayama, the vast majority were Japanese Peruvians. Shortly after the Japanese military attack on Pearl Harbor, community leaders were scapegoated and rounded up for detention throughout the Americas. In Peru, a blacklist had been generated. While not based on any real or credible evidence of Japanese subversive activity, the blacklist targeted businessmen, community leaders, and educators. In collaboration with Peruvian officials, the U.S. used the blacklist as the basis for rounding up hostages. These hostages were then to be traded for Americans held by Japan. Most of the Japanese Latin Americans were interned in a Department of Justice camp at Crystal City, Texas. But for Art and the other internees, their long ordeal did not end with the close of World War II. The remaining Japanese Latin Americans were told that they were illegal aliens and would be deported. And because the Latin American governments initially refused to allow these internees to return, over 1,000 were thus deported to war-devastated Japan. The legislation that I am about to sign provides for a restitution payment to each of the 60,000 survivors, Japanese surviving Japanese Americans of the 120,000 who were relocated or detained. Yet no payment can make up for those lost years. So what is most important in this bill has less to do with property than with honor. For here, we admit a wrong. Here, we reaffirm our commitment as a nation to equal justice under the law. However, Art was denied justice. Under this law, Japanese Latin Americans were deemed ineligible for redress as they were not U.S. citizens or residents at the time of internment. In an effort to call attention to their hidden history and to support efforts for redress, the Campaign for Justice was formed. The Campaign for Justice started in 1996, and it was founded by individuals and organizations who wanted to seek redress for Japanese Latin Americans. In response to public pressure, the Department of Justice offered a settlement of only $5,000 each, just one quarter of the $20,000 redress provided to the Japanese Americans. I wanted to get the equal justice. I wanted to regain the dignity for my parents. While supporting the decision of those who accepted the settlement, Art Shibayama, along with several others, chose to opt out of the settlement. He then filed his own lawsuit, preferring to fight for both redress and a full disclosure of the violations committed by the United States during World War II. Despite his efforts, Art was once again denied justice. His case was dismissed in the final months of 2002. You know, it's not like we wanted to come here. We didn't want to come here. We were forced to come here. We were brought here by the government. So how can that be illegal? My family and I are very proud of my father for his pursuit for justice and for his courage to hold the U.S. government accountable for its wrongdoing. Despite my father's and others' efforts to educate the American public, the Japanese-Peruvian internment is still widely unknown. My brother and I and my cousins want to know what happened to my father, my aunts and uncles, my grandfather, and my great-grandparents. We know they suffered, and we want to know why. We need the U.S. government to apologize and acknowledge what it did. We need educational funds, and we need full disclosure. So what happened to the Japanese Peruvians will not happen to my family, to any other family, or to any other group again.